that's okay so this is all about organic synthetic roots and here we go so i'm going to share this screen here and i will move around in it do various things with it here it is um so i'm going to do the slideshow here okay <coughs> so synthesis is making one chemical into another and this is the bit where you might want a pen and paper uh, this is the sort of question do not write this down um, this is the sort of question which is very difficult for many many students many students look at this question and think i can't do this if you are the sort of student who can look at this and go, yeah, that's not a problem, then that is, uh, you are very, very good. Um, and I'm very pleased for you. Um, but for many people, this is a very confusing question. This question asks you about how to change one chemical into another. So if you look at the top, it says ethane, and that is made from ethene in step two. So it asks you in the full question, it asks you about what chemicals are necessary in step two, etc. And it was a um, it was a question with many marks. So if you couldn't do organic chemistry, this was a big problem. But don't bother writing it down because I will show you how to do it. This might be worth writing down. OK, this is my organic map. And I normally start it over here on the left hand side with alkene. Then that turns into the next blue box, which says alkanol. And further to the right is alkanoic acid. And the alkanoic acid and the alkanol both join to make the gray box down here, which says ester. And above alkene, it says alkane. And it says polymer in this sort of purple box. And in a yellow box at the bottom is soap. Now, if you are going to make notes today, it would be worth you drawing that out. But it is worth having long arrows, OK, because you're going to write things on these arrows because an alkene can be made into an alkanol. And what we need to know is how. So we will be looking at this alkene to alkanol, alkanol to alkanoic acid and so on. And we will be writing down what type of reaction it is, how we do it and so on. And I know some of the people at Church Army wanted to do this um, particular synthetic net. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do today. But I think many of you will find it very useful now. What is going to happen in this lesson is it will become more complicated and then it will become easier. I promise by the end I will give you something that you will go, ah, I can do that. So it will start difficult. Um, it becomes quite confusing. But th this is one of those um, organic maps that you really just have to sit down and learn. And that's really difficult, I think. I think it's very difficult just to learn things like this. So what you really need to do is to draw it out quite a lot of times. We generally think that if you write something out a lot of times, it will make more sense. It will, uh, your brain will get used to it. Uh, my students who have this particular synthetic map, I tell them to stick it up wherever they live. Uh, in somewhere where they can see it quite often and they can cover up bits of it and see if they can remember how to turn one part into another. So I will leave you just for a moment while you just uh, draw that out if you're doing that. Um, if you're not, just it's OK. Because this is being recorded and you would be able to watch it again. Hey, Fatma, how nice to see your name. Um, I guess you're probably coming in one of the, with one of the schools. There's Fatma. That's great. It's 
bits and Mary's I need to keep you muted sorry otherwise everybody gets lots of sound in the background okay so there's the the map alkene to alkanol alkanol to alkanoic acid that's the beginning glucose is turned into alkanol now you may know this because this happens in kenya quite a lot um, quite a lot of glucose from sugarcane is turned into alkanol uh, the alkanol is ethanol the two carbon alk alkanol and it is uh, by a process that many of you will know um, <clears throat> where i was brought up in nigeria um, a lot of people used palm oil and they made palm oil into palm wine um, which they thought was great okay so there's the map i hope that you've all got the basis of it now okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to minimize this okay here we go so we're going to start at glucose and we're going to turn glucose into the alkene sorry the alkanol uh does anybody know how you turn glucose into an alkanol does anybody know how you turn glucose into an alkanol anybody i'm sure some people do there discuss it with your neighbor just for a moment glucose sugar into alkanol somebody at mathari mixed is fermentation excellent answer well done and so <clears throat> it is fermentation and what you need to know is that the alkanol which is produced by glucose being fermented is mainly ethanol c2h5 so it is uh, fermentation very good dandora well done D dandora girls also got that answer that's really good so it's fermentation now fermentation you need to know what is necessary for fermentation and it is yeast and water and a warm temperature it's normally about our body temperature 37 that sort of temperature but there's one thing that is not written here and that is an absence of oxygen in other words we do not want any oxygen in there we'll see why we don't want any oxygen in there in a minute so glucose fermentation to alkanol and it is yeast it's actually the enzymes in yeast but we would normally just put ends uh, put yeast and we need water and we need warmth and no oxygen okay that's easy so how about an alkanol into the alkanoic acid whoops sorry go back well, an alkanoic acid is normally produced by the oxidation of an alkanol. So when you take an alkanol and you want to turn it into an alkanoic acid, we need an oxidizing agent. Some of you will know this formula and some of you won't. You can learn the formula or the name. You don't normally need both. I would net learn the name if I were you. This is potassium dichromate 6 potassium dichromate 6 and dilute sulfuric acid and it is heated you don't have to know this word reflux it just means boiled up so um, it can't escape okay so it is potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate that doesn't matter the group one metal doesn't matter potassium dichromate and acid we often know it as acidified potassium dichromate or acidified sodium dichromate and it is heated and that is an oxidation so you might want to write that down that is an oxidation can anybody tell me what the opposite of oxidation is what is the opposite of oxidation i'm sure you know opposite of good good from dandora good from mathari both reduction excellent answers well done so <clears throat> if we were going to take an alkanoic acid and turn it back in into an alkanol we would use reduction okay what's next 
Let's take the alkanol and the alkanoic acid and turn them into an ester. Because to make an ester, which is a pleasant smelling, a sweet smelling, the smell of bananas or pineapples or many, many different fruits, that's due to esters. And it can be made artificially using just esters. So if you, um, in this country, we can't grow pineapples, um, not easily anyway. But we could make the smell of a pineapple really quite easily using an ester. So if I wanted to make a food which smelt of pineapples, I could do that. It wouldn't be difficult. Um, I just need three esters mixed together and it would smell of pineapples. But a, an ester is made from an alkanol and an alkanoic acid added together one to one. So one mole of alkanol, one mole of alkanoic acid, not one gram, because the molecules are different masses. Alkanoic acids are usually heavier than alkanols of the same number of carbons anyway. So they are added together one to one. And then we need some drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. The concentrated sulfuric acid is there as a catalyst to speed up the reaction and we do it warm. OK, it's got to be warm. The problem with the reaction is that it is reversible. Reversible reactions are uh, no good if we are trying to make a product because as soon as you make the product, it starts to break up and make the reactants. In other words, it undoes the reaction. But that is not important here. So alkanol, alkanoic acid, join together, make ester. Now, esters are common um, uh, in, in nature. All oils and fats are esters. OK, all oils and fats are esters. That doesn't mean they smell nice because their molecules are too big, but that's what they are. Now we're going to go back to alkanol and we're going to turn the alkanol into an alkene. And to turn an alkanol into an alkene, we need to remove water. We need to dehydrate it. And the best way to dehydrate is using concentrated sulfuric acid and heating it up to about 170 degrees Celsius, about 170. It can go higher, but there's no point in spending money on doing it higher. Now, each one of these reactions, each one of the reactions normally has more than one way of doing it. So there are other ways of taking an alkanol and turning it into an alkene. So, for instance, if I just heat it, with some uh, broken plant pot, an alkanol will turn into an alkene. But the one they want in the examination is concentrated sulfuric acid and 170. So if I've made my alkene, can I go back the other way? Yes, I can. I can turn an alkene. <coughs> it was dehydration from alkanol to alkene. So from alkene to alkanol must be the addition of water. And there are lots of different ways of doing this. But in industry, we use steam under pressure and a catalyst. So it's water. And the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius. And we have a pressure because the alkene and the steam are going to be gases. So we want to push them together. So we have a pressure of 70 atmospheres and then we have a H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid as a catalyst. OK, now it's starting to get a little bit full now, but that's OK, because bit by bit we can't learn all of it at the same time. But bit by bit, we can learn all the parts of it. So what else can we do here? Well, we can turn an alkene into an alkane. But this is not from a simple alkene to a simple alkane. This is an industrial process, which I think uh, you may know about. 
and that is adding hydrogen. So we are getting rid of the double bond and we are adding hydrogen with a nickel catalyst at somewhere between 40 and 80 degrees Celsius. So go 60 and you cannot be wrong. So this is hydrogen H2 and a nickel catalyst and it is heated up. Can we turn an alkane into an alkene? Yes, we can, but only again industrially. This is the thing that we know as cracking. This is from an alkane to an alkene, from a group of alkanes to a group of alkenes and more shorter alkanes is cracking, which is high temperature and pressure and a catalyst. Normally the catalyst is aluminium oxide, but it doesn't matter what it is. That is cracking. So those two there, turning an alkane into an alkene and turning an alkene into an alkane, are industrial processes. Some of the others are as well, turning an alkene into alkanol. But an alkane into an alkene is cracking and many alkenes are produced. An alkene into an alkane is a bit strange because the only time, the main time, that we make an alkene into an alkane is taking a cooking oil and turning it into margarine. Into margarine. If we take a cooking oil, anything, let's say we take maize oil, palm oil, and we add hydrogen and nickel catalyst, it will turn harder and harder and it will become like margarine. Okay, alkenes are also useful because alkenes can be made into polymers, addition polymers. And that uh, is effected, that is made by pressure and heat and catalyst. It's quite a complicated process and again, it's made in large quantities. What we know addition polymers as are plastics. So, for instance, if we make if we start with an alkene like ethene, we will make polyethene, which is normal plastic bag material, which you people in Kenya were very brave to first be the country in the world to ban, which was very good. Well done. In this country now, we have to pay a lot of money for a plastic bag. OK, uh, we, we're near the end of it. I'm going to run back over it in just a minute. We're near the end of this bit. Uh, the last bit is making a soaps from esters. So down the bottom there, esters, the type of ester which we are talking about here are oils or fats. If you have ever handled sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide solution, and you touch it with your fingers, it will feel soapy. This is not because it is soapy. It is because your fingers produce fats and oils. And when you touch the sodium hydroxide, it makes your own type of soap, which is why it feels soapy. So if you take an ester, which is an oil or fat, and you want to turn it into soap, you heat it with an alkali, like sodium hydroxide. OK. So that's the whole of the synthetic route. It doesn't cover absolutely everything, but it covers almost everything. So I've I now just going to go through the types of reaction that they are. I mentioned most of them, but I'm just going to put them up here. I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to start at alkene and go across to alkanol. So if you want to write it down, alkene to alkanol, that's hydration and then oxidation to turn it into the alkanoic acid. That's hydration, adding water to make the alkanol from the alkene. And then from the alkanol to the alkanoic acid is oxidation. The reason there's a dotted arrow here from alkanoic acid back to alkanol is that you will not be asked about it. So you don't need to know it. But from an alkanol to an alkene is dehydration. You do need to know that. 
you do need to know about reduction or hydrogenation from alkene to alkane. You need to know the word polymerization. In esterification from an alkanoic acid and alkane, you, alkanol, you need to know the term, the word esterification. And from esters, from not simple esters, not like the ones that smell a pineapple, but from oils and fats to make soap. Um, the word is saponification. The word sapon uh, is from Latin or French, um, which means uh, which was to do with making soaps. OK. So that's just the types of reaction now. What I do when I, sorry, I'll go back to that so those people are still writing down. What my students do is they have a copy of this with all the chemicals on, a copy of this with the types of reaction, and a copy like this. And in this, it has none of the chemicals nor the types of reaction, and they test themselves with this. So they say, OK, they pick a number um, and they say, how do I do number eight? How do I number one? How do I number six? How do I do? And so on. OK. They test themselves. Now, uh, I'm going to move on just for a minute, just past this to the next bit. <clears throat> now, this is the bit where I think I can make things a little bit easier. Don't write this down at the moment. I'm going to show you uh, the type of, if you remember from the beginning, there was a long question. And what we're going to do now is to try to make this all a bit simpler. And I'm going to show you how. So these are all questions which have come up. Uh, in examinations, how do you make propene into propanol, ethene into ethane, glucose into ethene, and so on? Okay, they're all they're all simple uh, synthetic root questions. And one of the things you have to be able to do is to remember how to do this. So I'm going to show you my method for doing it. You don't, you can have your own way, um, but I'm going to show you my method. Let's go back to this question. Don't write it down. But let's just look at this question. So just become familiar with it. Don't do not write anything down. Just have a look at it. And I'd like you to spend a couple of minutes looking at the question and seeing if you can work out how to do any of the steps. OK, just have a look. Talk with your neighbour. Please do talk with your neighbour. Don't do it silently. Have a conversation with somebody to see if you can work out how to do it. So I'll give you a few moments while you just have a think. I think I would start at ethene here, the alkene here. Don't worry too much about going right or left. Worry about the ones in the boxes. OK, connect the boxes if you can. Just have a look at them. Just see if you can work out what step two and step three, four, five and so on are. Let's have a look. Do talk to somebody else. I want to hear you talking. OK, I want people to actually talk to each other because it's a way of learning. It's really important. Kabira are talking well. That's good. Dandora, start talking to it. Good. That's better. Well done. Mathari Mix, start talking to each other. Uh, come on, Mathari Mix, you can talk. Everybody have a look at this just for a few moments, a few minutes. And then I will show you how to con how to consider it. Don't bother writing down the question. You can have the question later. I can get it so your teacher could print it out if they want to. It's quite a big question. It's quite a quite a difficult question. Uh, it's got many parts to it. Hello, Glory. I'm sorry I didn't see you there. Well done. 
Very nice to see you. We're doing synthetic roots. This is all recorded, so hopefully you will be able to see it if you missed some of it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, I'm just going to uh, expand you quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to show me how confident you feel about this sort of question. Um, show me like this. I feel really quite confident. I'm confident about some of it, but not all of it. I'm really not very confident at all. OK, so just show me, everybody. Please, everybody, just show me St. Mary's, Mathari Mix, Dandora. How do you feel about these sort of questions? Kabiro feeling pretty good. That's very good. Mathari Mix, good. You don't have to say good. It doesn't doesn't make you clever unless you can do it in the exam. If you just go, yes, yes, I'm clever. Yes, it doesn't work. Dandora, yes, maybe, no. Oh, good. OK, Glory, yes, maybe, no. Oh, Glory have no thumbs. This is such a tragedy. Glory have no thumbs. Oh, dear. OK, right. I'm going to show you how to do it. So don't worry about it. I'm now going to take the middle bit of this. I'm going to just take out the middle bit. Here we go. So what I've got here is I've just taken out the middle of the question, which goes ethane from ethene, ethene to ethanol, ethanol to ethanoic acid. And what I recommend you do is you work out the molecular formula for each one of them. So here are the uh, chemical formulas of each one of them. These are not the molecular formulas. Well, in some cases they are. But so ethane, C2H6, ethene, C2H4, uh, ethanol, C2H5OH, uh, and uh, ethanoic acid, the alkanoic acid, CH3COOH. OK, so that's where we're going to start. So here they are. And what we do then is we we have to do something a little bit cleverer. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw on this. We'll see if I can do it. OK, so let me just move that out of the way. OK, so <clears throat> what I'm talking about is having the molecular formulas. Now, the molecular formula for. Oh, hello. What's happening there? That's not what I want to do. <laughs> Hang on just a minute. Right. Let's just get rid of that one. OK. Here we go. I hope here we go anyway. So uh, C2H6, molecular formula, C2H6, no problem. Uh, ethene, C2H4, uh, the alkanol, C2, molecular formula, add all the, keep all the elements together, C2H6O, and at the bottom, C2H12342O2. So then what I do is I say, OK, if I want to turn this here up here into that there, I work out what has happened to the molecule. So I can say, OK, that is minus 2 h if i want to go the other way sorry about the wobbly line i would add to h now actually this is going to be h2 so let's look at another one okay um how about from c2h4 the alkene to the alkanol that C2H4 to C2H6O, and I just go, OK, the number of carbons is the same, but I have added 
two H's and I've added an oxygen. Now, two H's and one oxygen is a water, isn't it? So just by looking at the molecular formula, I can see that I have had to add water to it. Even if I cannot remember how to turn an alkene into an alkanol, I can work it out quite easily. So how about the other way? Uh, so let's use this here. Well, if I've just worked out that it adds water going from the alkene to the alkanol, then this must be minus water. The next step is a little bit more complicated. So the number of carbons stays the same. The number of hydrogens goes down. So it goes down from six to two, so that's minus two H's. But I also add an oxygen. So it's not water, it's nothing to do with water. And if I go in the opposite direction, upwards from the alkanoic acid at the bottom to the alkanol, then it must be the opposite. In other words, add two H's and take away an oxygen. Now, if you know your chemistry, you will know that adding oxygen is oxidation. You may not know that taking away hydrogen is, whoops, sorry. Oh, hello, what is happening here? Sorry. Oh, uh, no. Let's get rid of this. Something really weird happened there. OK, let's see if I can draw again. OK. Hope it'll work. Ah, yes. So taking away hydrogen and adding oxygen is oxidation. And on the other op side, if I add hydrogen and I take away oxygen, that is reduction. So just by looking at the molecular formula, I can get an idea of what is happening. That's really important. OK, that's that's a very important thing to realize. OK, so let's just get rid of that. And just spot what we do each time, OK? So what we do to start with is write out the molecular formulas. OK, that's the first thing, the molecular formula. Then you look at each one of these and you say, how do I turn that into that? How do I? You look at just what is happening in terms of the atoms which have been added or taken away, OK? So each step, we just look to see what has happened. So C2H4 to C2H6O, add two hydrogens and an oxygen. That's the same as adding water. And therefore, on the other side, it must be the same as losing water. The bottom one, C2H6O, C2, oh yes, I am losing two hydrogens. I am gaining an oxygen opposite on the other side and that is oxidation on the right hand side and reduction on the left hand side okay so let's move on whoops sorry oh heck i'm gonna have to get rid of all those lines hang on just a moment Just one moment. OK, so now it's time for you to have a go. So. Here we go. I'm sharing my screen. And you're going to have a go at one yourself. And I'm going to give you this particular group of uh, reactions and if you've got a piece of spare paper between two of you if you want share your ideas I'd like you to have a go 
At the top, we have C2H5OH, ethanol. On the left, C2H4, then C2H5OH again. CH3COH at the bottom, here, down at the bottom. CH3COONA, here, and up at the top, CH3COOC2H5. And they are number one, number two, number three, number four, all the way down there, five and number six up there. And what I'd like you to do is to have a look and see if you can work out what to do in number one. And I'd like you to be able to tell me, number one, what is what type of reaction it is and what you would use. By all means, use your synthetic map to work it out. But this is just a piece of practice and then there will be more. So. I'm going to give you, let's say, five minutes and see how you're getting on. I will come and take some answers and so on, and we'll see how people are getting on. OK, so I'm going to give you five minutes and we'll just see. You won't do it all in five minutes unless you're very, very good. But there it is. See if you can have a go at that. Well, I'm a thoroughly mixed uh, giving answers already. Let me just have a look. Hang on. Uh, sorry, hang on just a minute. OK, number one. Two, oh, wow, you're very fast. Go up a bit. I mean, sorry. Uh, yeah, move yours up. Dehydration, hydration, oxidation. Go on up, up a little bit further. That's really amazing. Uh, sorry, Dan, what was your name? Sorry. Brenda, Brenda, you're a genius. <laughs> well, it would be nice if you were. Maybe you are a genius. You're certainly very good at spotting these types of reaction. I'm very impressed. OK, Brenda is the person to beat. But just have a go. Do work with somebody else, because sometimes you will understand it. Sometimes somebody else will understand it. It is good to share your ideas. Fatma, Michael, you can do it as well. Oh, yes, you can. I know Fatma can do it, even if she's thinking of being a maths teacher. Silly person. Somebody's got to be a maths teacher. Like teacher Sean. Dehydration, hydration, oxidation. Sorry, uh, hydration, sorry. Dehydration, hydration, oxidation. Uh, number four is oxidation. Num number five is, n it's not, it, it is like saponification. It is, it's a neutralization. That's a very good answer. And a sterification. Those are excellent answers of the type of reaction. D uh, Dandora, who is that, please? Please write your name on your sheet. It's really, really good. I just want to make you famous for a moment. Poor old Dandora, she's forgotten her own name. She's going to have to write down some more. Oh, a whole team. Ah, oh, Joyce, Annika and Gladys, all a whole team. That's very good. I'm very pleased with people working together as a team. Very good. OK, people, what what we've got in terms of the types of reaction from two schools so far are for, number one, because if you look at it, it's C2H6O to C2H4. That is a dehydration. Therefore, it is a hydration from number two. Number three has taken away hydrogens and has gained oxygen. So that's oxidation. Number four, all the way down from the alkanol to the alkanoic acid. That is also, if we look at it, 
losing hydrogens and adding oxygens, that is an oxidation. Number five is very much like a saponification, but it's actually a neutralization. And we'll see how we do that in a minute. And number six is an esterification. Now what I need to know is what chemicals you would use to make each one of these work. See if you can do each one of those. Have you got some answers there, Glory? Glory? Do you want to do you want to show me your your uh, answers there? Come on, Glory, have some guts. Come on, let's have a look. I'll be with you in just a minute, Mathari. Come on, Glory. No. At last, yes. Come on, Glory. Let's have a look. No? Okay, let's have a look at Matharin uh, mix. Hang on, I just gotta just gotta change the pin. So let's have a look. Let's um Mathari mixed were first. Let's have a look at Mathari mix first. Mathari mixed, show me, please. Let's have a look what we got. Pardon your quiz. What's wrong with my quiz? Well you can't see it? Can you not see it? Mathari mixed. Dandora can. Let me just have a look. Let me just, I'm just going to unpin. I'm just going to hang on. I just need to get it so I can see yours. Let's have a look at what Dandora Girls has got. Okay. So Dandora Girls, concentrated sulfuric acid for number one. We would need a temperature, uh, but you're right. Number two, water. Number three, potassium dichromate. Number four, potassium dichromate. Number five, NaOH. And number six, concentrated sulfuric acid. They are all correct answers, except that there are other bits needed as well. OK, that's really important really important they're, they're all very good answers but we need everything there let's have a look at the church army so let me just put a pin in you hang on okay i'm just gonna i'm just coming to you hang on okay dehydration do, 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 concentrate of yeah, yes number one is right number two a little bit closer please Hydration, rehydration, use water and 70 atmospheres. What temperature in number two? But not yet. I'll just have a look at the rest. You're right. It's K2Cr207. That's very, very good. Lance, I like that you write your name backwards. That's very good. Can I have you just can move across so I can see your number four, five, please? Five. Can I see your number five, please, Lance? That's it, cool. Got it. Oh. Really good, very, very good. Well done, Lance, if that's your name, backwards or forwards um lance has got all of it so what we're going to do now is i'm going to just tell everybody oh hang on let's let me just have a look sorry hang on mathari mixed just hold it there 
hang on, I'm just making you a bit bigger so I can see you better. H2K2, so yeah, yeah. Temperature 70, 170, yeah. It's very good. Well done. It's 70 atmospheres, but that's very good. Okay. So let's let's just go everybody. I'm just gonna remove the spotlight. Okay, I'm going smaller with everybody. Okay, so from uh, ethanol to ethene, dehydration, concentrated sulfuric acid, 170 degrees Celsius. That's number one. Number two, ethene to ethanol. That's a hydration. That means water. And it was 300 degrees Celsius and 70 atmospheres. Some of my students can remember the two numbers, 300 and 70, but they have to remember that it's 300 degrees Celsius so that the uh, water becomes steam. And it's also H3PO4 as a catalyst. C2H5OH to CH3COH from the alkanol to the alkanoic acid, number three, that is oxidation. Many people, K2Cr2O7, very good, but you need dilute sulfuric acid and warm or heat. And that is the same for number four also. Number five, I only saw two answers which were right, which were both really good. And it was a neutralization using NaOH in water, NaOH aqueous, sodium hydroxide. It is the same reaction as saponification, but saponification, because the oils are more difficult to react, needs more heat. And from the top number six, from ethanol to this, which is called ethyl ethanoate, we would need to add ethanoic acid. That's very important. We need the alkanoic acid there as well. And we do need concentrated sulfuric acid. And we also need um, uh, some warmth. So that should mean that now we would be able to do many of a question like this, not perhaps all of it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to give you. Oops, hang on, where's that gone? Ah, there they are. Here are some more which you could write down now so you could test yourselves later. We're going to look at something else. But we, what I want you to do is just to write down the pairs. How do I turn A into B? And next time we could just I could just tell you the answers. So propene to propanol, ethene to ethane, ethanol to ethanoic acid, ethanol, eth ethyl ethanoate, glucose to ethene. That's not one step. That's two steps. Butanol to butene, palm oil to soap, and propene to polypropene, which is the polymer. So just um, write those down so you can have a so you can have a go uh, in your own time. Just write them down so you can practice. There they are. You can test each other with these. Take it as a bit of extra practice. You can do these, uh, Yestin. I know you can. I, I can see your brain power just laughing at this. Fatma's done it all in her head already. Michael has done it all already. I'm going to meet you, Estin, just in case you say something rude. Oops, sorry. So there they are. Everybody done? Because I want to move on to the last thing that we're doing today. Okay. So the last thing is uh, part of paper three. 
And in paper three, they sometimes ask you, oh, Charlie, Charmy, you want to show me something? Just, just show me what you want to show me. Church Army. Rewind. Is that your name? Cool. Do you mean rewind this page? <laughs> hello. Hello, Church Army. Everybody can see you now. That's lovely. Look, there's Church Army. Well done, Church Army. Goodbye, Church Army. <laughs> um okay okay so there there is there is that there is those uh those chemicals to have a go yourself at and i will give you the answers next time but now we want to finish with one thing and that is in the organic map we need to know how to test to distinguish between chemicals okay now you may know these you might not but you need to know them and uh, so I've got here some pairs that you might want to write down. So alkane and alkene, they quite often ask you how to tell the difference between an alkane and an alkene. Sometimes they include an alkyne, but not very often, because an alkyne does the same as an alkene. So how do we tell the difference between them? Well, we burn them and there is more soot with an alkene or an alkyne, more black smoke or more soot. But orange bromine water or solution of bromine is the key test. So to tell the difference between alkane and alkene, we use bromine water. And the bromine water goes colourless with an alkene. OK, so it goes colourless with an alkene, but it does not. It stays orange with an alkane. OK, next, how about an alkanol and an alkanoic acid? Well, if you remember how an alkanol is turned into an alkanoic acid, that might help. This is a very common uh, test that they ask you about, test, uh, testing between an alkanol and alkanoic acid. And the answer is really simple. Well, the first one is that um, Actually, uh, alkanols are used as fuels much more than alkanoic acids, but they do both burn, but alkanols burn really easily. But the best one is to try to oxidize it because the alkanoic acid has already been oxidized, but the alkanol hasn't. So if I add an oxidizing agent like orange potassium dichromate and some acid, and I warm up the two tubes, one with an alkanol in, one with alkanoic acid, the alkanol will turn the orange potassium dichromate green. Chromium-6 becomes chromium-3. We can use purple potassium manganate. Purple potassium manganate, potassium manganate 7, uh, that goes from purple to colourless or potassium dichromate, which goes orange to green. You should know those colours. OK, the other one that they quite often ask questions about. Why has my arrow disappeared? Is about esters and esters have a pleasant smell. So we don't normally test for them directly. But if you were to smell an alkane, alkene, alkanol, alkanoic acid, they are not we, what we think of as sweet smelling, but esters are. So esters give a pleasant smell, whereas all the rest don't. So that's the test for an ester. OK. I think everybody will have written now. I hope everybody's written. Just raise your hand if you need a little bit more time to write those down. Nope. Good. OK, so going back to the beginning, oh, right back to the beginning. So here we go. 
So we started today, just so you know where we've been, because we've done quite a lot. Now, some of you obviously very good at organic chemistry, but uh, some of you not so good. So I want you to start to look at this question and go, gosh, I, could, I didn't think I would do any of that. And now I can do quite a lot of it. So the idea is we said we start with um, the map and the synthetic map allows me to link together all these chemicals. And the idea is to put it together bit by bit. And if you draw it out yourself, you can draw it out like this bit by bit. It's important that you can do each one of the stages together, whether, for instance, it's alkanol to alkene, which is dehydration or hydration or making an alkane or cracking alkanes to make alkenes or making alkenes into polymers or making an ester into a soap with saponification. And we did all that. And then we said there are types of reaction like fermentation and esterification. You need to know those names. And this is the way to test yourself, to draw it out, stick it somewhere where you can refer to it sometimes. Have a look at it. OK. And then we said, OK. Um, how do we make one chemical into another? And I said the best way was to look at the um, molecular formulas and turn the molecular formulas and look at each one of the molecular formulas and just look at what had happened. Losing hydrogens, gaining oxygens, gaining water, losing water and so on. That makes it easy. Then you've done this and many of you have done really very well indeed at that. And therefore, this is the next thing to do. OK, that's this is the next sort of proper stage to do. These were the tests and they are tests that you really just need to learn. Um, it's not fun or easy to learn, um, but I'm going to finish with a little. Um, sort of oral quiz. OK, are you ready? So each school, here we go. Ready? Ready? Uh, I need somebody to write the answer and to come up to the board, to, to the camera, and show me the answer. OK, are you ready? So I want to, you to turn propanol into propene. How would you do it? If you think you know, write down the answer, rush up, show me, show it to the camera. Propanol to propene. Propanol to propene. How would you do it? Come on, students, you can do this.